painful red eye that's not resolving. Okay, what's the next one? Warm body. Yeah. Warm bodies. Okay. Yeah. Corneal abrasions. Abrasions. Okay. And, and let's say. Hmm? <coughs> Fla flashing <laughs> lights. Floaters, so. Floaters and flashes. Non non painful um, vision loss. Okay. He had a high beam on the clinic. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see that blood pull up in the front. Go grab some exciting. food. I guess conjunctivitis as well. Okay. Buddy. Venture of destiny here. Scoo scooch it forward and then you can drop this lap. Oh. Yeah, we'll require some coordinated <laughs> efforts. <laughs> but I think in the painful red eye is like yeah. iritis, uh, uteritis, yeah. anterior epicleritis, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Like when is it just a red eye we can cut and when is it like, no, no, we need to call you and you need to approve steroids? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. What else? How deep can I go with that burrow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. That is the I'm scared. Yeah. I love that. That is my least favorite. Yeah, okay. I'll be like, oh, I got most of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rest of it. Should I yeah. Yeah. Go until you see fluid. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> what else? Anything else? Particular case, this is plenty, but particular cases that you may have had before that you worry about or. When you talk to somebody and you're like, oh, maybe I didn't manage that as well as I wanted to. Okay. Um, let's start here. Start here. So let's talk. Let's just talk about foreign body health as we start. <laughs> take this one off the list. So, so common, right? So common. You probably see it more than we do. I bet because patients don't always come to us. They come to their urgent care, their ER, most of the time with their foreign body. Um, what's your What's your approach? How do you How do, How are you? Do you have a slip lamp? Yeah. Okay, so you feel pretty comfortable looking. You, you see something knocking in the cornea. Do you evert the lids? Do you look underneath, underneath everything, stain, and look for things? Do you flush just as a precaution? Just flush, just to be safe? I guess good. Um, do you talk about different types of foreign body? Is it metallic? Is it organic? Is it high velocity? Yeah, not. what's that like? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, foreign body, I find that patients are often. Uh, it's been there three days by the time they come see me. I'm amazed that they've been putting up with it, but they just keep keep thinking it's going to go away. Um, most important thing, obviously, is is there any perforation or penetration, if it's high velocity or something like that. Because a cult, you can have a self-sealing corneal wound that looks like nothing ever went in the eye, and yet there's something there. And that's typically a metallic, like hot piece of metal, and they're tiny. It's like they were just... We've seen a few this winter when they're out there chopping wood with a mallet, and they hit it, and, oh, and then a day later they don't feel it anymore because mm -hmm. it's gone through and through and it's lodged somewhere in the retina or, or iris or lens. Um, and so those are interesting because those are often missed. Those are just occult, metallic, intraocular foreign bodies, which um, frankly are often sterile because of the heat related to mm -hmm. it shearing off. And um, we go and get them because there's issues with toxicity in the eye. But just something to think about. So can I, we pause and just yeah. have a, ask a management question? Yeah. Is that something, so I struggle with that because I don't have access, like, do we send everybody for, like, well, there's no evidence of open, like, for globe rupture, but would it be helpful for you to know on a Friday night if you're going to schedule that person on Monday, like, do we send them for CT orbit or whatever? Or do um, you just... Do we always call you if it's a high velocity no. metallic form? Like, yeah, right? <laughs> no, period. Don't call. Yeah. Don't call. Um, I think from a medical legal side, vision loss is one of those next to death is huge. And so I think in your position, you should probably call more often than you think you should. Just for confirmation. I hate it. I had a New York doc texting me a photo today from the ghost and I'm taking all this risk, looking at it, never going to see the patient. It's an abscess. He wants to bring it in the ER. And I'm like, yeah, sure, go for it. You know? Yeah. And but he's going to. Yeah, that's his plan. And um, so we, we don't love that. Honestly, that's how you're going to feel from us. When you're talking to any ophthalmologist, we're going to like, why are you calling me? Just tell you to look at it. You know, that's how we feel. We want to see it. Uh, rather than just trusting that 
You're managing it properly? No, no, but sending, sorry, sending, like, I see a lot of welders who are like, mm -hmm. no, I just, I just checked really quick and I lifted the hood and then, ah. Beauty keratitis kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, or, or like, you know, Long slag, riders. slag mm -hmm. going in there. Mm -hmm. So, so as, as it relates to the, to the high velocity metallic yeah. form body, acute onset, <clears throat> do you, no obvious like Seidel sign. Yep. Do you want Yes, you should us have to an bump. ophthalmic follow up. Even if you even if you call and you say we think you're great, you should probably caution that patient to have a routine ophthalmologist to look at it within a week. Okay. That. So that's okay. our so that's I our think that's just a week. Fine. Yeah, okay. I think that's cool. completely fine and you're covered. I would say, you know, if vision <clears throat> dramatic decline in vision, of course go in single or whatever, but you could give them our number or any ophthalmologist number in the community and just say here I want you to call on Monday document that and get a follow-up okay is, within that, a week. is that acceptable to you guys to just yeah. leave it to the patient to make a follow-up phone call or do you have to sometimes coordinate? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I mean I'm as real worried, I do it, but. people have to take personal responsibility yeah. eventually yeah. you know like we're not gonna sit there and hold their hand right they're not children right and we you don't know don't. Yeah, I think yeah, if you yeah. documented that, and I think with a, like you asked time. You frame, document it's not a child? Yeah. <laughs> right. I think that's completely fine. Okay. Yeah, Carl right. picked him up. Right, okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Carl, so Carl picks course, them all up and takes them over. 7 p.m. on Friday. We can just yeah, send them in a week. I think, yeah, you just have them call the office, put it on them, and, yeah. and then fax a note, and it just comes. You don't necessarily have to confirm referral or acceptance or whatever, and okay. we'll get them in. We have working spots, so we'll see them. Um, so, so I'm not saying things that you don't, you already know, or you're not concerned about. Let's talk about just, just talk about it. How do you, what are you interested in, in talking about foreign body location? Okay, what specifically? Obviously, in the field of view. Okay. Burning, not burning, deeper, less Got deep. It. Yeah. Follow up. Yeah. Do you, do you pluck them out with like a 30 gauge or something? How do you take out embedded material in cornea? We do have a needle. We have a we do have a or a blunt. Yeah. I, I take a cotton tip and just take a 30 gauge or whatever and just, that's my handle. I always use my dominant hand and I just, you know, sometimes I'll have my staff just kind of make sure their head is staying right there on the on the headrest just to support them. And I just pluck it out. You know, just It's easy with a nice, with a needle just to kind of pop it loose from the cornea and then it's on the corneal surface and not embedded. I can just sweep it off with the rest of the cotton tip or whatever, just get it out of the eye. That's the most important thing, I think. And then when you burr, you're going to leave a little, you know, when they heal, if you ever see these long term, you ever, you ever seen these folks that have multiple abrasion or multiple foreign bodies all the time? And boop, 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 they're just pockmarked all over their cornea. Oh. So they, they leave behind a little faint corneal scar. It's not really visually significant unless it's axial or there's multiple. And they're not going to see them unless it's like dark and certain lights coming through. They're not going to see them during the day. But you do see these folks and you're like, oh my gosh, like it's just their occupation, it's what they do. Um, so when to burr, when not to burr, is that what you're asking? Yeah, and just right there when it is axial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's axial, I think if you're comfortable removing it, I would remove it. And I wouldn't myself often burr axially without having a good conversation and documentation with them. If it's metallic and there's a rust ring, then you burr. You don't have to. You can you can go back. An ophthalmologist can go back and do a keratectomy and remove you know that iron in the uh, in the cornea. I don't do it. I send it to a cornea specialist. So I don't think it's incumbent on you to have to do that. Don't feel like you have to do that. Let's start with a cotton sweep, then the needle, then the burlesque. I That's typically right. needle first. Oh, I just okay. engage it, just with a needle, just kind of like. Mm -hmm tangentially a little bit, just kind of engage it and pop it out of the cornea. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's loose and it's easier to just sweep away at that point. That's often, and sometimes it'll just, just I don't know what it is, it's attractive forces, it'll just stick to that needle tip and just pull away. Um, so my staff, when there's a foreign body work in, they always have just that cotton tip, 30 gauge, prepare a cane. And I, you know, put them beta, put some beta dye in, beta dye in, or topical fluoxacin or something, just because you're you've got a corneal penetration, epithelium is not there, and you can get a bad, you know, something in there, organic material or whatever. So we don't have like beta -dine? just we don't have beta dye. Well, I mean, would would we just take like a swab and? Yep. So that's ten percent. They're gonna hate you. Um, ten percent good surgical scrub. 
We use half of that, 5%, so you could, you could dilute 10% if you have. And you do what? Um, beta 9 in their eye? Yeah, we use beta 9 in the eye all the time. Okay, tell wow. us how. Okay. Uh, so we just dilute it from 10%, which is what you're seeing for a normal, like, surgical prep. Just mm -hmm. those little beta 9 bottles, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you probably have, we have beta the swabs. swabs. We have the swabs. Yeah. So and I would be doing that first, putting them on. Topicals. Yes. I would just put them on topicals okay. in your position. I'll tell you what we do. We mm -hmm. use 5%, which is ophthalmic. Yeah. You can get if you are interested. Um, and I just put a drop of 5% in the eye before I do anything. And then the beta 9 is covering the field. Sweep it out and then put another drop of beta 9 when I'm done. Just a drop in the fornix. Mm -hmm. They blink it out. Oh, okay. They're a little, I'm not trying to get exactly on the on the spot. And then I put them on a fluoroquinolone for a week, you know, or Focusin or something. And I give them precautions, and we see them back just because some don't respond or some have a, you know, ter an abscess or something. Um, see them back in a week, week or two, okay. and give them precautions. Hey, this starts to go bad. A lot of pus and a lot of discharge, and you're hurting, and there's pain, and you're looking in the mirror, and there's a white lesion there. Come see us. You know, we, we're very careful in documenting that just to say it's on you, like you said. So I wouldn't worry about the beta nine on your side. If you're not comfortable with that and you don't have that, um, I would just cover with antibiotics. If you do have beta nine, what do you dilute it with? Uh, saline. Saline. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Could you stick the swab <laughs> in a cup? <laughs> 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 stick the saline. Like, you don't know what you're like, getting. Yeah, less than. Just change it for us. You know we do I mean? have liquid beta nine here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, didn't, do. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. So it's it'll in all the rooms yeah. and it's also up on the stock shelf in the back. <laughs> That's not preventing you from still protecting them. <laughs> we don't just have the swabs, I promise. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just my faculties of I don't know that there's any <laughs> proven benefit. Yeah. It's just what I've been told. Totally yeah. So that's half of medicine, though, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how I would approach that. Other questions about foreign body? Any tricks to getting out large contact lenses? <laughs> um, the, the easiest thing to do is put them as flat as you can, get them as high as you can. Do you have a chair that goes up? Uh, Four. Our tables, our tables are pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Get them as flat as you can, get them as high as you can, and you think about, I'm not an artist, so forgive me. <laughs> there's their lids, there's their cornea, mm -hmm. and you're just, if you're there, you can just, Put a topical tetracaine in the eye, and they're you know they're always having no fun. You don't have speculums, is that right? Correct. 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 I'll look if you guys can have a couple speculums. They're they're, lit, they're inexpensive just to give you a good exposure, but they, they hate them. They're like they're, they're clockwork you know, orange style. Yeah, exactly. You don't use paper clips. <laughs> make a, make make them into speculum. Yeah, have you ever? Like a paper clip. Yeah, have you ever made them ER into? Yeah, that's right. the ER trick. Yeah. So just to, just because people are like, you can't do anything because right. you're doing that. And we, we have them with um, the normal, just the Flexi, and then you have the Lieberman, which you can just bring. And <laughs> you know, completely out of full exposure. But embedded contacts, if there's, it's just kind of like there's not enough fluid below, so they're just kind of adhering there. So just take that cotton tip again. Eye is anesthetized, and you just kind of touch and dent a little bit and pull, pull over towards the lateral aspect of the eye, and it'll just pull off. Do it all the time. So you're, just, you're just breaking the seal. You're just breaking the seal. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about, you know, you probably need to get more comfortable mashing the eye. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Take, take that off the yeah. film. But, <laughs> so, yeah, you just, just um, get comfortable with normal tactile tonometry. That's how yeah. half the time when my tech's not there and I don't want to document what the pressure really is. Mm -hmm. I just say tactile tonometry is normal. Just get comfortable right. just feeling the globe. It should feel like a soft grape. You mm -hmm. know, it should just be soft. And um, get comfortable just that little bit of pressure and just kind of dislodge it and pull it over. Okay. If it's up in the fornix, which sometimes you'll have people with a cannabis in there. Yeah. Those are harder. <laughs> just, you just have to sweep the cornices. Okay. And, How do you um, do that? So basically, cotton tip. Cotton tip and are you here. wetting that every time? Like, are you um, using saline on your cotton tip or do you do it dry? I usually do it dry. Okay. Yeah, I just do it dry. I just make sure the, the corn is anesthetized. That's all that really matters. Okay. Um, and you know, if you are sweeping the cornices, you're just there's a 
little tool called a DeMars, which is just a, a retractor, like a big sword pole retractor. Ooh, for the eye. Just a little, you can really pull the lids away, the upper lids, the hard one. But uh, if you were interested, you could get a little surgical DeMars, um, probably close to $300. You probably don't want to do that. But just, you know, it helps you lift the lid up really well and keep things out of your. I probably would just punt that. <laughs> Say, go see your friendly ophthalmologist. Try. Same process, they wear those. I had a, a girl come in with a complete blackout. Yeah. And so it covered her entire cornea that I. She had a painted pupil? No, is the whole thing, like full white, full everything. They were doing a costume party of some yeah. kind. Oh, yeah. And she got them online, and they were like super hard and rigid mm -hmm. and I could I wear contacts and I couldn't shift it side to side mm -hmm. and without a, the speculum really opening things up mm -hmm. I I actually had to get under there and pop it off mm -hmm. after numbing any tricks to that how'd you pop it um, I might need to be learning from you there. Oh, I <laughs> literally I took the back end so the, the hard end of the q-tip of the q-tip and the just I pulled it down and just popped the edge up and then literally had to get tweezers because it was like two hands and mm -hmm. just peel it off of her eye yeah um, I think you should teach a course on that. I've never, yeah, uh, okay. I've never just, seen I'm that. Sure. I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> Chinese. Oh, no, no, they're mine. They don't touch the other people's things. No. <laughs> people think, no. Um, but no, I was wondering if there was any tricks to that type of process because I we did. I just did what. Well, well, that's what we would do. do. ER is the MacGyver's of yeah. there. Okay, see, that's where it's right back from. Yeah. Absolutely. Just figure it out. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. And then antibiotics afterwards. I topical. would. Okay. I would just, just to be safe. Okay. Like cover it. I mean, we're probably creating multi-resistant bacteria all the time, but we do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, MRSA resistant staff is coming back. I'm sure you guys, you guys know more than I do about all that stuff. But there's a lot of resistant yeah. organisms that are out there. Mm -hmm. We're including in the eye. This is the year of strep. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Yeah, bad strap this year. Do you have a Do you have a two cent talk on steroids? <laughs> a, t a two cent, two cent. Yeah, a two, two cents cent? maybe. Two cents or two yeah. cent talk on when to add steroids? Yeah. That's a question. Well, I mean, I think a lot of us historically were taught never, mm -hmm. um, and then when you think about it, never do it. And I think every time I send somebody, I always see to get put on steroids. Yeah. An ophthalmologist yeah. started yeah. steroids. Here's the thing. Here's well, and they ask like, why didn't you do it? And I'm like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the risk. Yeah. It's viral. And you and you just let it flower. And we see these horrible cases and they almost always have the same story. I had a little something. I got seen here and a month later, you know, now it's something much more and they got treated for three weeks for a topical. How much did it exacerbate it? Certainly I'm sure it did, but it's more on the medical legal side. And so when someone calls me about steroids, my answer is always no. I always say, please don't start them. Because we want to see them native. We want to know what they really look like. Even if the eye's inflamed, even if you get it, someone asks about iris, we, we really want to see it. Because that's what they don't come back. They don't come in, you know? Right. They take they their steroid, and they right. don't follow up. Yeah. Then right. they eventually come back. And it's hard for us to really know what's going on. I've sadly been an expert witness a couple of times with HSV keratitis. Almost always, it's a, it's somewhere else. It's not an ophthalmologist that starts it, and the patients that are just there going after somebody. Um, so I think it's big medical legal risk for you to put steroid on the eye. Honestly, I would just be cautious. And any quote unquote conjunctivitis, corneal abscess, keratitis that just doesn't behave normally, you should punt. Just because we miss them. We miss them all the time. You're like, yeah, that's fine. They don't, and they're back a month later, and it's like, this is not what I thought it was. And they're then on their eye cyclovir, and um, Zergan, you know, gang cyclovir on the eye, and then it's, all right, you know, obviously we're back off to a corneal specialist at that point for additional care, particularly if it's axial or something like that. I don't think any eye doctor um, worth anything is going to yell at you for not starting steroid, yeah. right? Like, I think that we've had some differences of opinion with local eye clinics and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but I don't think your office would ever give us a hassle for not no. starting a, a steroid. And no, I don't think so. And, I, and honestly, I, I, I'm i sure in proper protocols and care follow-up and the right patient, you totally could. And no, no, it's just often that I, 
I'm trying to learn from that, so I go back and look to see what did they do, what could yeah. I do different. And yeah. why didn't I help? Often them? I'm like, oh, that's yeah. all it took. Yeah. Um, they used the same antibiotic I wrote them for, and then they just added steroids to it, and now they're better. <laughs> but there's a reason why they're there, and yeah, yeah, we're yeah, here, yeah, and we do something different than they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. You know so. what we do, we don't know what we should be doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. No, no, and see, so, wait, see how this is going, that, right? So, apropos of that comment, like, is there a timeline where we need to impress upon the patient, like, let's say it's the Friday before a holiday, or the Thursday before a holiday weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're, you know, four days. Do you want us to just say call on Monday and then we call and leave a message or like, is there a time frame where it matters in terms of clinical outcomes that they, for, a, for like a, like an iritis, uveitis, yeah. something like that? Um, the short answer is probably not, honestly, for okay. uveitis. I don't have to be panicky about like getting in at no. 48 hours or whatever. I think okay. you need to document that you have recommended it. I think any time it's a little higher acuity, you're concerned, I think you probably should call from your safety perspective. Call the ER, sorry, call the on-call, whomever it is, ophthalmologist, and just get that in your notes that you spoke with them. That's what I would do if I were in the position. And the doctor said, okay, Monday, you know, yeah. that's my thought. And if it raises, if it rises to a level for them, listening to you share their history, mm -hmm. you know, this patient is now not like no light perception, you're okay on Monday still? You know, that's, um, no, that's, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. When, when you feel like your clinical judgment is like, oh, I just think maybe it would be better, but I'm going to trust the doc, I'll call. You know? Okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like whenever you or anyone else calls, you're you're looking for reassurance from us that it's okay to do what you already believe is appropriate. Totally. And so it doesn't ever bother me. I don't know. Okay. I think that's that's our role. I think, I think that's our role. But um, maybe some of my colleagues don't some don't treat you that way, or don't you feel like you can't call them or whatever? You're the one who bothered to come down and educate us. So. <laughs> <laughs>